Okay, what you guys are about to see is an excerpt taken from a podcast that Kevin and I do called Muay Thai Bones. So this is best of Muay Thai Bones. In this section, we're talking about one championship and some opportunities it's creating for female fighters. And at the time, we did not know that two of the fighters that we're talking about are going to fight each other, Alma from Australia and Stamp Fairtex from Thailand. So uh, check out the full episode. Link to that is in the description. And I hope you guys enjoy this excerpt. Maybe the final segment, we never really know. There might be a favorite joke sec section at the end. Um, <laughs> spring that topic on you. Um, so we wanted to talk about, earlier in the podcast, we were talking about frustration with belts and world titles and whatnot. But we want to talk a little bit about the state of Muay Thai, some interesting things that are happening. And it's like News Corner. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Um, uh, we're talking about one championship, right? Yes. Um, specifically. Okay, what are we specifically talking about? Alma from Australia, who's a young, very aggressive fighter, very good for Dynamic. what Juan wants, um, has just signed, and she was very excited about it. Uh, it's a huge achievement for her. And um, Janet Todd from America, who fought against Stamp very recently, had another opportunity to come fight in Bangkok. And okay, I feel had like a we're great show. blowing through topic bullet points. Okay, well, I've bullet pointed. Now you can break okay. it down. Okay. Um, let's talk, let's enter it this way. Larger concept. One championship is providing huge opportunities for female, uh, top level female fighting, international opportunities that not only include exposure, but also financial gain, yes. like career type opportunities. And the first huge dimension of this was their adoption of Stamp Fairtex uh, into the fold. Yes. Right? Just so to give our perspective on Stamp Fairtex and what this one championship opportunity for her was, um, she was a good, I would say a B to B plus level fighter. Like she was not the best in Thailand at her weight. Mm. Um, she lost to Petty Jaw in a way that people were like, she can't even fight her. I thought it was a good fight. Yeah. Uh, she beat you, but barely with a couple of kilos on you um, in a kind of performative way. Like, she was not her career, which is typical of a girl her age. She'd spent much of her life fighting. Her career was going where so many Thai female fighters' career go. It was slowing down and about to end. Really. Yeah, so she's been fighting since she was probably a little bit before eight. So she has tons of uh, experience in fighting and was um, probably going to not be fighting much anymore, going to school, college, all this stuff, but she got bought by Fairtex. They had never had a sponsored female fighter before. Yeah. And so they, they bought Stamp and turned her into what she is now. And she is a much better fighter much. than not only she was, but that she possibly could have been given the trajectory that most yeah, women her usually age would have very good fighter female fighters. I think they peak around 16 because that's when they're fighting for the most money in side bets. That's when they're fighting the most frequently. They their career arc once they hit 16, they start fighting infrequently because their opponents only are other top side bet opponents, and there's a lot of dodging each other and. Are um, negotiating what a side bet, where the fight's going to be, and a lot of times they just stop being able to fight. Yep. And by Stamp Fairtex being t uh, uh, by Stamp being taken in by Fairtex, and then being given this one championship pathway, which is a promotion she can fight on for pretty significant 
fight pay. And, and they promote her. And promotion. Yeah. Promotional, like, into a person with highlights and storytelling about herself. This is something that no Thai female fighter would have had. Yeah. This is a huge difference, and even though it's one person. She's going into MMA a little bit. She has two belts through one. One is kickboxing, one's Muay Thai, right? I think so. Um, but she is going into MMA. Contrast that with Loma, who's going into MMA, but she has none of this promotional or, behind well, her. Well, not none. She has some. But just, not like this. Not like this. But Loma, another fighter who had peaked and would run out of opponents in Thailand, uh, is a, was a higher level talent than Stamp, I would say, when she was a fighter. She, like, she is arguably the best or one of the best female fighters in the world when she was fighting in Thailand uh, as a Muay Thai fighter. She transitioned to MMA, Invicta. I guess she's pursuing this kind of MMA career, which also is an an interesting, viable career extension for top female fighters. Yeah. But we're talking about Muay Thai um, extension yeah. of a career. And if you compare the promotional uh, pictures building around the careers of both of them, you can see that stamp, at least from our, our corner of the world, what one is doing is kind of amazing. Yeah. what's happening with Stamp. And not to even denigrate what's happening with Loma, uh, that's its own path as well. It's more, let's like, let's talk about what's going on with one championship. Like, so, an additional story. So that's one great story, right? I don't know how many Thai female fighters are going to be pulled over to one. I know that Cherry Sityodong, who was not a, an elite fighter, Except when she was maybe 14, she was pretty good. Uh, she was training over there. She was going to be part of the promotion, but not a lot has come of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe other Thai females will be pulled into the money and into the process. But Janet Todd uh, of the United States was flown in to fight Stamp and had a great fight against Stamp. Stamp won. Stamp, if she's going to be a like signature fighter, she needs great opponents yep. and Janet Todd went over there and fought and gave her all she could handle Stamp pulled out the fight in a really uh, to me in a way that impressed me about Stamp's skill and let me know how much she's progressed as a fighter since we knew her as a Thai fighter like the whole Fairtex thing has really elevated her mm -hmm. um, on many levels not just technically but also confidence wise and her aggression in space but this is a really interesting thing Janet Todd we were like, she had just turned pro, I don't know, a year ago or something <laughs> like that. She had a long time amateur fighter with lots of success. And when she turned pro, we were like, what is going to happen? Because we've for seen her? this story before, because the scene in America is well, so well, what's the story? inconsistent. Amy Davis. No, but what, what the is story, the story? The story being good female fighters who are amateur turn pro and have no opponents. Like turning She's pro as a woman. In the West, can kills be, your career. It can be crazy because you have no other pros. You're you're going into a tiny, tiny pool, which so, is why they get squeezed into MMA eventually. So for Janet to have uh, won the opportunity to come fight Stamp on one, but then to have done so well that one was like again, and take her and bring her to well, this most recent feeding into the point. Go ahead, describe it in slower motion. This is an amazing opportunity. For an American, we're talking about for a Thai person, for a Thai woman, this was a great opportunity because of where her trajectory would have gone. For an American woman, your trajectory is not so great yeah. either. At that size, you have nobody to fight. Well, the big question is, what is she going to do? She gets an opportunity all the way. Where does they fight in Singapore? Yes. Okay. They have this kind of like coming out pro party against Stamp, who was kind of the the promotions girl. Yep. And Janet does so well, like her style was really kind of like beautiful, aggressive, that she finds herself then being flown by one out to a show in a kickboxing match, not Muay Thai, in Bangkok. So 
okay, not Muay Thai, but kickboxing. It's kind of crazy to me to fly all the way to Thailand for not a Muay Thai fight. <laughs> but this is the promotion. This is the promotion. One does MMA, kickboxing, and Muay Thai. Like they really want to create a mixed martial art, like a true mixed martial art platform. brand impression, yeah. Yeah, a platform. So I don't know. We don't know enough about the Janet Todd story in terms of what really happened, but it is so cool that she one got the opportunity to fight this big fight in Singapore, but then they liked her enough that they're like, now come fight on our next card yeah. in Bangkok. And she did great. And she leg kicked this girl to death, apparently only saw a highlight, but she looked like she totally owned that fight. I guess the thing that excites me and that's important is um, this is creating an avenue of female fighting that just did not exist in any way, shape, or form before. Um, and I'm not sure how many fighters it will affect, hopefully a lot, but Thai female fighter, 19 years old, been fighting since she was eight, her career is about to die. Yeah. Right. She has a lifetime of experience at 19 already. What's going to come of it? Nothing. Like yep. a few belt fights, maybe, if she has the connections. Instead, ascending. I think she's like 21 now. Yeah, she, I'm saying that she was. When, if, when, when you're 19, yeah. when you're 19, it's kind of ending. Yeah. Like, there's no opportunities yep. for these wonderful fighters. And then devoted amateur, successful United States fighter turning pro, who is she going to fight? The same problem. Yeah. Right? And then they get to fight each other. Yeah. And then not only do they get to fight each other, but then that leads to another opportunity for Janet to fight. She fought a Chinese opponent who, who don't know. And there's something really cool going on here. Um, that's honestly probably being fueled by one success in MMA, the way they're like yeah. pulling on the UFC audiences. But they're building something. Yeah. By them now it. signing Alma, they're okay, that's building another thing. something. That Alma, I would say, is one of the most exciting young Western female Muay Thai fighters on the planet. Who did she beat? I forgot who she beat. She beat somebody unexpectedly. Like Farrell. I don't know what her first name is. No, no, no. She. She beat a tie. Oh, Wonder Girl. Did she? Yeah. No? No, I don't think Wonder Girl would fight her. Yeah. She would be pieced up by her. <laughs> <laughs> she fought somebody out yeah. of Sang Tianoi's gym. She was at Sang Tianoi's gym and fought somebody. Uh, and she did a really good she job. She's an explosive, dynamic fighter who throws with combinations, but not like a memorized fighter. Um, and now she's going over, again, one is grabbing a young talent that they can maybe build a promotional thing. This is something that you wanted to talk about, which is not just that they're giving her the fight, but they're they're actually, they invest in the storytelling around a female, that this is a, our fighter. Yeah. Well, well, can you talk about that a little bit? What it feels like to you, because you've been in the fight game for a little bit now. People, I think that people failed to recognize on a large scale because they just don't pay that close of attention. But when the UFC created a female division, they had a star and then whoever they're feeding to her. Mm. You can't care that much about an entire division when you have a star and then whoever's fighting her. You have to build everybody. Like, you have to have all the stories. And so you're like, oh my God, she's fighting her. Like, if, if one had not cared about Janet anymore because even though she fought great, oh, she lost. Yes. They're Let's, like, bye. And yep. now you're like, well, now who's stamp fighting? I don't know, whoever the next name is that I'm not going to remember or whatever. Now you're like, I remember Janet. She did great against stamp. Now she's done this really great thing. very interesting how off of a loss opportunity Because came. she fought fucking well. Yes, but also uh, one has the brains to like recognize the value. Yeah. And to be like, and again. Yes. Like, that is unusual in female promotions. 
And we were contrasting this <laughs> with Yo Cow's approach, yeah. which was uh, when I fought Lomini, which is quite a well-known fight to even people who don't know me because it's the one where she cut me so much. This was like my first major cuts in fights. Um, Man, over 100 fights ago. Because she won that fight, uh, Yo Cow signed her. But then they didn't promote her other than saying that no one would fight her. <laughs> and so nobody actually fought her. And I don't know. Did she even fight one time after I that? I don't I don't know. I think she may have gone Sylvie? into a seminar no, or something. No, no, like uh, Sylvia Lenote. She fought Lenote before me. I thought they fought again. No, Sylvia Lenote didn't want to fight her again because uh, of the elbows. Mm. But, um, but basically her career died. Which is crazy because if you look at that fight, I didn't win that fight. My career has been pretty good. <laughs> her career has gone way down. Totally. and Because of how they don't promote her, because of the way that they just... Not only do they not promote her, but they don't promote anybody around yeah. her. Yeah. Like, there's no... And the same thing happened with Amy Like, who's going to watch a fight if you're like, our amazing fighter, she's going to walk through this opponent? You're not going to watch that. You're like, our amazing fighter is going to fight this amazing fighter. And totally. Like, and awesome. the same thing kind of happened with Amy Pierney. Amy Pierney fought with uh, fought for Yo Cow, and they got this fed her uh, European fighter, I mm. think. Um, but nothing really came of that. Yeah, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, you don't even you didn't even know she was a Yo Cow fighter. I believe she was a Yo Cow <laughs> fighter. In England, I think that that. Yeah, happened. exactly. But nothing. There was no embrace of female fighting in the concept of how one is displaying it, right? Yeah. Where the loser gains opportunity yeah and maybe there are financial constraints on what they can do but it also seems like a different mindset amy pyrony finally goes and fight and fought in lion fight and got a big title uh in america but that's not that wasn't under that promotion mm. under the ocal promotion and it was like it was very it's interesting to see the difference the yokao approach is maybe more of a traditional kind of promotional approach the one championship approach is this holistic embrace of female fighting and I, I can't imagine like what they're going to do because they can't sign enough fighters to fight no. stamp no. and also to build them into um, great storylines right. like where are they going to find four or five 51 kilo we know all the 51 kilo wonderful fighters yeah and I, so I'm not sure that the whole thing can de develop um, who is Alma gonna fight there needs to be three more like badass 54 kilo girls I don't know maybe they have a deeper plan um, but man what they're doing already is totally on the right path yeah they're hitting good notes over and over and over and over again Right? It's not like one good note. It's like, yeah, and that's a good idea, and that's a good idea. <laughs> and now we're going to start our own network. That's a really <laughs> good idea. <laughs> yeah, totally. So um, as, a, as a side note, so one championship, people are like um, tagging one on Sylvie's fights now and blah, 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 blah. By, by saying one championship people, he means people who watch one championship, not people who work for one championship. Yeah, people are tagging one, yeah. one champ, like yeah. they're going at one championship in yeah. the comments, um, and so and people and people privately message you should do one championship. This is the thing to say: we are huge fans and supporters of one championship, but our total philosophy, uh, which has been from the very beginning, is avoid all promotion, big promotional. Um, platforms one is because just speaking from my perspective one is a promotion basically has its interest in heart so its driving decisions are about itself and when power when promotions are powerful you get pulled into their gravitational pull which are though those interests we are, what we generally do, and we've been doing it from the beginning, is we're like, no belts, although you fought for one. It was like, Sylvie, you want to fight? And we're like, yeah, why not? No big promotions, 
everything is Tyson and the Catskills. You can see it in our last pod, uh, Boy yeah. Bones podcast. If you want podcast. to know what that means, we talk about that in the last podcast. Which is basically lots and lots of fights moving towards a really, really high level of feeling and fluency that only comes from lots and lots of fights. Avoiding the traps of defining uh, rest stops. Yeah, or, I guess. or external interests and organizations making that definition for you. Yeah, totally. So we're like, wow, that one is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. But we have always had this recipe, which is really, I'm going to speak for Sylvie in this. It's aiming to be a certain kind of fighter that cannot be defined or captured by belts or a promotional, uh, like a promotions promotional material. Like the, the competence you are pursuing in clinch fighting is to me off the charts. Like it's never been done, never been attempted by a female fighter, maybe not even a male fighter, because of the, de- the kinds of influences you can have uh, from all the legends that you are training with and not even also unknown gem crews of the library. And I'm like, there's something so satisfying on the ultra that you're running. Mm. And people are like, why don't you run in this 100-yard dash? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and we're like... I'm like doing bad water on my own with no real... Totally. Start finish line organization. Totally. And they're and, like, go do the Boston Marathon. And no, it's a hundred yard dash. And you're like, okay, if you can organize the hundred yard dash so it's in the Badlands Ultra, like this hundred yards, <laughs> then, then yes, I will run and that. I'll do that one. I'll run that hundred yard dash. Give me a bib. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm gonna keep running after the hundredth yard, right? Is it not like that? I remember that. I was like. Um, you fought some uh, Western fighter, and it was just like, yeah, we'll throw that in on two days' notice or five days' notice or whatever. And then I'm I, all I don't, all I want is to not get cut, so I can fight three days later. And it was like, people are just not con, have no, are not used to the concept of thinking of fights in threes and fives and like this kind of throwing yourself forward like people are like well Sylvia when are you going to retire and teach people and you're like I'm thinking of 10 more years I'm not even halfway in my fight total like these are these are perspectives that just people don't have if you want to check my inbox and see how many people write to me telling me what they've learned I am teaching people (laughs) currently I don't don't got to stop to teach anybody. That is true. That is so true. I'm going to keep running. That is so true. <laughs> so, I don't know. I am I have to say I'm impressed by the Alma signing. It means that they're just really reaching out. I don't think Alma can get down to No, uh, she's stamp. Her, She's a different division. They created a division? Well, it's, she's a different weight. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe Stamp will fight up. And she, Alma will fight down. I don't know how far down Alma can go. I don't know. Uh, is she 54? I think 53 something. Mm. Sure that's don't go that far. I mean, if stamps 51, I don't know. Either that's another family of of opponents they have to grow, or mm-hmm. they're trying to bridge together. But they have two exciting three with Janet. There's three exciting um, fighters, female fighters that are kind of like active, aggressive combination fighters, which will sell to a mixed martial art audience. Yeah, and it's it moves. Like, they have different locations. Yeah, totally. That's cool. Okay, so what else can we... We're going to wrap this up. What? What, we were going to a favorite joke section? Is that what we were doing? (laughs) (laughs) Do you have one, honey? So that is an excerpt, Best of Muay Thai Bones. Uh, Kevin and I talk about all kinds of things having to do with Muay Thai in our podcast. So definitely check out the full episode and... These episodes and podcasts are free, but they are made possible through the support of my patrons. So if you'd like to become a patron and support projects like this, check out the link in the description.